Hello, what is up YouTube? It is your boy Brutal Chaos. Today we're going to be checking out another video, of course. This is going to be the Dark Angels Origins in History by freaking Oculus Emperor. Like I said, more Warhammer's coming. We're going to chew this up into the parts as well. Like I said, if these videos weren't so long, I'd do it. But man, like I said, I'm on a time budget a lot with work and stuff. So doing them in parts would be best, you know, if I can. And if they're only like 20 to 30 minutes, I could do it in one part. But this one's an hour and 21 minutes long. So... Hope you enjoy the video. Like I said, I enjoy Oculus. Like I said, he has a lot of great videos. So we're going to switch over like to this. And guys, once again, keep being freaking awesome. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for smashing the like button, leaving your comments, and supporting the original video. So let's do this. And rest in peace, Mari. That's really nice of him to put that for his friend. Respect. I just want to be respectful for that and give a moment of silence, man. You never know in life, like I said, life is short, so enjoy it to the fullest, man. Uh, like I said, be res big respect for that, man. You never know. I love his intro. Loyalty. In our Imperial... The lion. It is one of the most paramount of all virtues, alongside piety, submission, and a complete lack of any desire to question. It has ever been thus, for the foundations of the Imperium were built upon the backs of those to whom the concept formed the central crux of their efficacy as a martial force. Brotherhood, after all, being just another version of loyalty. Just why the Horus heresy was so tragic, so painful, so utterly destructive a conflict, is that, quite beyond the mundane destruction it unleashed, it severed bonds thought unbreakable, and sundered oaths thought inviolate. As the Warmaster and his traitorous kin set the galaxy aflame, so too did they torch the very concept of fidelity, spitting upon their duty to their species in order to pursue petty ambition. We, as an Imperium, lost in the Age of Darkness the ability to trust. The traitor could be lurking anywhere, you see. That is true. Whom could one rely upon if the greatest, brightest star of the Emperor's own sons could fall to such base perfidy? By his actions, did the chaos around, yeah. to question the loyalties of those who professed their continued allegiance to the throne of Terra, to the Emperor of Mankind. And with the subjects of this record, well, it hardly needs to be remarked upon that there are those of us within the deepest, darkest circles of knowledge who, parley to truth unutterable, have questions. Questions that have dogged these warriors since their inception, one might add, for just as the War Master hid his treachery behind apparently kingly deeds and seemingly warm smiles, so too did this legion seek obscurity, cultivating quite deliberately a separation from the concept of truth and honesty, lest the Imperium see them for what they. I was going to say, like, not to cut him off, um, but man, like, he really goes in depth and detail in his reactions. I really enjoy because I always learn something new. Like I said, I'm a new. I'm new into the Warhammer universe, but like I said, uh, played some of the tabletop now. And like I said, and after playing the Death Core, and I played the Orcs, which I love playing the Orcs because they're so random. Like on the tabletop, it's just fun. Like cause you're either going to get slapped or you're going to do some damage. So it was pretty cool. The Death Core is fun because like they're just 
I don't know, they're kind of different, like, like with all the infantry and the tanks, the shooting, the snipers, and the, with the laser guns and all that, like, so they're pretty cool. And then I finally got to play the Dark Angels, which I really like, man, with the Hell Blasters and everything, like, so I really feel like the Dark Angels have become my favorite faction, like I said, just something about them really stands out to me, like, my favorite color was always, like, one of them was green, but that's not really why I chose them. Like I said, I just think they're fantastic. They're top tier. Very, very cool. Like I said, uh, I read in a, another video, like I said, shout out to Bricky for this. He said, you're going to want to go with the army that you find the most cool and stands out to you. Because, I mean, why wouldn't you? You know, so the Dark Angels definitely do that. So let's continue this. Sorry to stop and kind of blab, but, you know, some people in my videos would say, you know, you need to talk a little bit more about some of the subjects and stuff and stuff you feel. So, you know, things that stand out to me, I'll, I'll pause. Or if I think something about what's going on in the video or about the subject going on, I'll, I want to definitely speak my thoughts. So, guys, thank you so much. Let's continue this. Dogged these warriors since their inception, one might add. For just as the War Master hid his treachery behind apparently kingly deeds and seemingly warm smiles, so too did this legion seek obscurity, cultivating quite deliberately a separation from the concept of truth and honesty, lest the Imperium see them for what they truly were. Secrets and lies, mysteries and untruths, an ever-expanding series of confidences and occlusions piling atop one another until what remains is an organization so utterly impenetrable that those upon its outside cannot help but ask, why? What have you to hide from us? Are you loyal? Is there fundamentally a difference between loyalty and honesty? Honesty is the expectation that the truth is being told. That is very true. And I can't wait to see Lionel Johnson come back, man. The lion roars and needs to come back. On the other hand, loyalty is the display of trust. Honesty states that one must tell the truth, yet loyalty demands trust the truth is being told. Can yeah, one conceal the truth point. and still court loyalty? Are we considered loyal? Something the question. questions are for greater philosophants than I, mm -hmm. your humble servant. But they must be borne in mind when that's considering that's the some hard questions. long awaited record. For they go hand in hand with their very existence. Hard questions to give answers to. Know then that this is a record. Of the first, that. the secret annihilators of the master of mankind, mm. his uncrowned princes, the first legion, dark angels. Super cool. They look the so, common so awesome. Of this legion, the first, is not merely a numerical designation. There is a popular, if to one's mind, inexplicable opinion that the Legion as Astartes were created and raised to force concurrently. This is an untruth. It is likely that this belief spawned from the fact that, yes, certain Legions would come to outpace their cousins in recruitment and expansion due to any number of factors. The incredibly stable gene seed of the 13th Legion would allow them to vastly supersede the 5th, for example, in neophytes, which, coupled with the latter's warfare and deployment preferences, ultimately led to the later enumerated legion, the 13th, outsizing the 5th that preceded it. The 1st, however, were just that. The 1st legion. The original. The template as laid down by the Emperor of Mankind during his wars to unify Terra under his banner. Other, however, than this simple fact, almost nothing is known of their origins. The foundation of the Legion as Astartes is one of the secrets of the Emperor that remain to this day perpetually shrouded. As one of his most enduring creations, this status is perhaps understandable, although understandably frustrating. Recent revelations about the participation of certain individuals within the Astartes and Primarch project must wait until another record, but what is currently verifiable is that the First Legion was his prototype. I love how Terra is basically just the world, like I said, right here, you see, like I said, Brazil, and freaking there's basically Africa, that's pretty cool, man. A master mold from whence others would be based. Drawn from the gene coding of his firstborn son, 
They were cast from that most stable of genetic heritage. Possessing the none lesion. of the apparently already extant qualities and curiosities that typified his other scions. Indeed, there appears to have been no attempt to either curate or introduce any. Whereas other legions had from their very inception clearly envisaged roles within the Legion as Astartes, such as the Revenant Ninth Legion's ability to breed Astartes from the most mutated of genetic stocks, or the Fifteenth Legion's arcane pursuits, the first were made to eschew such eccentricities. Despite this, the process of actually arriving at such genostability was incredibly long in its gestation. It is estimated by a majority of the chroniclers party to such records of the imperial household that the emperor began his work well over a century before the final battles of the Unification Wars. His Thunder Legions were at this point still the most advanced genetically modified soldiery on the home world, and that is unfortunately not saying much. The Thunder Warriors were successful, yes, but incredibly volatile, lacking any sort of real military coherence and discipline, and prone to outbreaks of incredible berserker violence and grand mal Kind of unstable, events, sounds like. As their hot-housed enhancements ate them from within. They were blunt and brutal tools for a blunt and brutal age, designed as a stopgap measure to break and butcher those who opposed unity and permit the Emperor his vital years of research and development. They knew not that they would be superseded, and therein lies their ultimate tragedy. But they did provide the Lord of Lightning with data invaluable to his Astartes projects. The initial intake stock for the yet-to-be-developed First Astartes Legion were drawn from every population center on the war-ravaged homeworld. For the Astartes ascension process was laborious and painful in those early days, still very much ill understood. The availability of suitable test beds on the genophage and radiation-soaked terra was small, to say the least. Through many laborious test batches, subjected to the most rigorous of biological and martial testing, the first handful of stable subjects were finally produced, forming the very first proto-legion at Alpha Stage. But a few hundred souls, all drawn from every- Dude, it's crazy to think how much testing went through to make some of these, like, Astartes and stuff, man, and test of these, and... Uh, it, it's intense. Every loyal and conquered nation on the face of Terra. The warrior sons of Frank and Albia rubbed shoulders with the nomads of the Thulean Basin, the techno-barbarians of the Caucasus Wastes and the Uralic Foothills, the berserker tribesmen of Scandia. All were present. One of their first engagements was to be rather early in this stage, during the failed coup of the first provost marshal of the Imperium, Uoma Kandawire. Candewire sought to prevent what she Looks saw as cool. the Legio Custodes' unlawful purgation of the Thunder Warriors, claiming it to be a seizure of power that nobody save the Emperor had the authority to simply exterminate an entire branch of the Imperial military. The newly cast warriors of the First were set by the Captain General of the Legio Custodes against their predecessors, with the newest of the Emperor's creations comporting themselves with a murderous efficiency that exceeded the wildest expectations of those who had worked in the Emperor's gene labs. The last of the Thunder Warriors that had been sheltered by Candlewire and deployed against the Imperial Palace were utterly annihilated. The age of the Astartes was ushered in by Bolt and Blade. All of the bloody knowledge of the Age of Strife was distilled into this newest of legions, the warrior cultures they had been drawn from, possessing the most vital and most deadly of skills honed through millennia of ceaseless conflict. In those earliest of years, the Astartes of the First were encouraged by their handlers within the nascent imperial regime to- Like, so do you ever see that chart of like the different like sizes of these dudes, like how big they are? the freaking gene manipulation that they had to endure at such an early age it's it's just it's some mind-blowing crazy stuff man like i said to make these astartes to shuck their former cultural identities but not its knowledge base 
and embrace the coming Imperial Age as its new paragons. This goes a long way to explain the names, redolent in what scant records of the Unification Wars remain. Heracles, Hengist, Cuchulain, Gilgamesh, appellations of... I also want to say I need to learn more about the Unification Wars and like the Great Crusade. I've, I've heard quite a bit about the Horus Heresy and stuff from the... But I, I've not really looked into the Unification Wars and stuff yet, so that, that's one I want to check out here soon, too. Like I said, man, I'm always learning with Warhammer. There's so much, man. It's crazy. Mythic quality, whose origins may be lost to the ages, but the sounds of which stir the hearts of men. Usually, such legendary nom de guerre are reserved for the deed names amongst the Legio Custodes, but the First Legion are nothing if not exceptions to a lot of rules. By separating the newly formed Astartes from their pasts and directing them towards the coming future, those of the Imperial Research and Development Wing hoped to bury the human past where it rightfully belonged, in addition to removing any potential bulwarks against Legion cohesion that such a culturally diverse background potentially represented. Amongst the hosts of Unity, their names, in combination with their habitually, even in those early days, dour character, granted them a reputation that awed, unlike any within the Emperor's armies. The Legio Custodes did indeed uh, spur such emotions, yet they were only ever by the Emperor's side, and in those days he took to the battlefields less and less. The First Legion and its footprint were far more widespread and more impactful, that looks as they cool. operated in every theatre of unity, both to bring the war to foes of the Imperium and to hone their already formidable skills. All the better to bring what they had learned back to the Imperial Palace and drill that hard-won knowledge into their cousins from younger, barely formed legions. Their dual role as frontline combat troops of terrifying ability and as drill masters of absolute sternness led to the rise of their first unofficial cognomen, the Uncrowned Princes, or simply the Crowns. All of these factors, from the encouragement of early handlers to take on a deliberately heroic character, to their status as sole combat effective legion, to their shepherding of younger Astartes, bred into the first a fierce pride in their status as firstborn, an emotion nope. that would initially serve them admirably, but would, in time, come to fester. They're very top tier, too, as well. That, however, was many, many decades hence. Unity would blood the first, unsurprisingly, to a far greater degree than any of their compatriots within the Legion as Astartes. Serving in every twisted theater of conflict the wars could throw at them, they, in response, created the first hosts, a particular facet of the Legion that would go on to become one of its defining operational characteristics. Effectively a series of unofficial sub-formations, the hosts were not part of the traditional chain of command, in fact quite the opposite, operating outside of it entirely. Each host took upon itself the burden of specializing in one or other pattern of warfare, making it their ultimate goal to become masters in whatever discipline they had elected to follow. That's pretty cool. It's likely that the origins of the hosts lay in the particular I mean, martial stylings of the that cultures way. that the first had been so actively encouraged to divest themselves of. But whereas the retention of these had in other legions informed overall character, the first only cared about what lessons of war may be learned from their forebearers, caring nothing for traditions or superstitions. As the hosts were not beholden to any one company of the legion, members of almost all of them could be counted upon as being present during any engagement the legion was involved in, prepared to provide their deadly expertise to better effect victory. During the third siege of Antioch in 603 M30, members from nine separate hosts collaborated across four different companies to bring the walls of that legendary citadel crumbling to the ground. As many as 18 unique hosts are known to have developed during the Unification Wars, and while the years would eventually see many merging under the auspices of cardinal martial disciplines, they were nevertheless an undeniable factor in the first's stunning successes. The homeworld was a carnal house of old knight savagery, 
a microcosm of the galaxy that the Emperor laid his imperial eyes upon. And with the First Legion's blood, the first lessons of... Dude, there's so much to, like, soak in your brain in these videos. It's, like, it's it's in a good way. It's really it's really cool. Like, like I say, I love how in detail he goes with the hosts and stuff like that. But, like, as someone that's new, it takes a bit for all of it to finally start getting in. Like, I'm, I'm kind of... Some things I'm a slow learner, some things I'm a fast learner. I'm pretty quick to learn with the tabletop, but when it comes to the lore, it takes me a little bit. But, but man, it, it's such an enjoyance to, like, listen to someone that is as talented as this, as Ocula is. But, like, Oculus, I can't even talk, goes into, like, all the lore and stuff like that, man. He studies. So definitely support the original content, like I said, man. This, this man is amazing. Like I said, I really enjoy it. Like I said, I learn more, even if it's like takes me a little bit, but it's, it's super awesome. Of modern 30th millennium warfare learned and learned well. The first were a testbed, not just for biological ascension, but for transhuman warfare in its totality. A formation willing and able to trial, to codify every method of killing and destruction that was available to the then nascent dude Astartes all the physicians. all the training that they do man they like their mindsets are so on point to like train and what they do it's it's crazy to think about like i said same thing with the with how they're made and all that stuff dude it's it's really some in-depth stuff man that you'd have to like think about it's just not something simple the discarding of certain hosts was not something that harmed the Legion. Quite the opposite, it fed the First's insatiable appetite for the knowledge of annihilation, and only served to make it even more effective. Look at them bolters. Initially operating only as small formations to provide tactical level support or Mark rapid II, deployment forces armor. to other Crusade. unification armies, the first lived up to their designation and status by being the. I just want to say, like, so I'm gonna remind a little bit right here. I don't want to cut them off. But uh, when I first seen like the black armored uh, dark angels, I was like, "Ain't they supposed to be green?" And then it was the same way when I played the freaking uh, Space Hulk Deathwing. That's another uh, reason I started to really enjoy the Dark Angels. Was that game like the white armor? I was like, "Huh?" I was like, "Ain't they supposed to be green?" You know, like. So it confused me for a while, and then my buddy explained it, so I was like, oh, okay. Being the first true legion... Like the Raven Wing. Growing to 10,000 in number. Like the Raven Wing cycle and, and the tabletop, I think they they got the black armor. Like so, so it was just like, I was like, why are they black? Like, and then he's like, oh, that's the Raven Wing. 668M30. A period where their cousins numbered in only the scant hundreds. At the Battle of Samarkand, this legion was fielded en masse for the first time against 20,000 genhanced slave troops of the Udog Hal. Their ruler, the degenerate king of Akkad, had held the Upper Asiatic Basin in his thrall for decades, cruelly subjecting its populations to mad eugenics and twisted geno-science perversions that suited his corrupted and blinkered worldview. The Emperor, leading his 10,000 firstborn, broke the hordes of Akkad within hours, scattering the slave hordes like chaff before his vision. The very first Grand Master of the First Legion, Hector Thrain, claimed the Mad King's head as a trophy for his armor's belt. The records of Akkad's debased sciences were purged utterly, the King's laboratoria torched, and his palaces ground to dust. We're going to probably do this video into three parts, because I was just seeing like how long it was it's like an hour and 21 minutes so we'll do about a half an hour piece i said man this man is really good like oculus is very very good and just i wish i had the time to just sit here tonight and go through the whole video to be honest. but hey at least you know one way or another we'll get through it like i said man but this this guy is very talented very smart with his videos so support his content as well like i said we'll leave the link down below like i said he, he's very good at what he does. The mass scale effectiveness proven beyond all doubt, the first recruitment beds were expanded, and processing of neophytes was accelerated. Hector Thrain was granted the title Sinestra of Terror, the left hand of the Lord of Lightning, 
an incalculable honor for any within the hordes of unification that did not directly belong to the imperial household. That looks so cool. The first's reputation that was only two armor. to increase with each victory, taking on a whispered revenance. For had these sons of the emperor not simply strode forth into hell, and left hell broken and shattered by their passage. The complete annihilation of Akkad was to become the first of the Legion's most defining features during unification, and the Great Crusade later. Henceforth, their only objective was the most total and supreme eradication of the foe, from existence mm. and from history. Only way to do it. Wipe them out. From Terra to the Solar Reclamation, the first brought their arts of destruction to the literal worst that Saul's light would fall upon. Xenos creatures ancient beyond reckoning, Psy Arcana that buckled reality itself, rampant machine the things Terminators from the age of technology awesome now mad with millennia old data corruption. The first were the only formation capable of combating such horrors, and combat them they did. On them freaking space wherever folks. They lurked. To prosecute the atrocities that stained his new realm, the Emperor granted to his firstborn the arsenal of the Imperial Dungeon, prescribed weapon systems and forbidden technology deemed too dangerous for any to use, but by sanction of he himself. That's pretty freaking cool. The first cool. eagerly accepted the gifts that. of their liege, and would never fail to deploy such arcana when absolutely necessary, leading to the overnight eradication of the twisted cities of Mole and Caden in Terra's eastern marshes, and the use of gene phage munitions on Saturn's moon Enceladus to purge a gestating crave infestation. Far from the first time the Legion would encounter that pernicious Xenos breed. The Meccano horrors of Fortress 31 in the Thulian Basin, and the now unnameable denizens of the Fortress Moon of Sedna, fared no better, pitting their atrocious forms against the first and ending their pathetic existences as naught but dust. Not even Turn remembered dust. by the passage of time. Few battle honors were claimed during this period, for the nature of the foes encountered by the first and the precarious political position of the early Imperium meant their existences could never be known to the wider population. There is much about the galaxy that the Emperor has been proven to have kept secret from his flock during these times, and the first were both his secret keepers and his destroyers, those he could call upon to remove the most dangerous of things from the inevitable path he had set mankind upon. The first took pride in this. Should they have not been able to speak about any particular battle, then they could at least take solace in the knowledge that there were many who knew that a foe so unspeakable as to be purged from all imperial record must have been mighty and wicked indeed. That is true. Their reputation, previously held as heroes of unity, was to change accordingly. A darkening of their character in the eyes of the masses, they did nothing to stymie. The respect they were accorded by the greater imperium was one that verged on terror. They were oft cast now, less as heroes and more as supremely loyal monsters. A better-the-devil-you-know attitude prevailed amongst Imperial military hierarchy, for a sense of ill luck followed in the wake of the First Legion, to the extent that many of the common soldiery were known to adopt superstitious practices, such as charms or wards. I was going to say, is that like a power claw on the Emperor there? It's kind of off topic, but I always see that it's got like that, that kind of claw shaped, and his other hand doesn't have that. So, like, if that's some kind of like power fist or power claw, y'all have to let me know down below. Like, the power claws kind of more sharp, so I was wondering maybe it's like a kind of like a power fist or something to protect themselves from the curse of the firstborn. Such actions obviously directly contravened the imperial truth and were ruthlessly suppressed by regimental political officers, then there was at least some merit and reality in the foundations of these rational beliefs. Baseline human forces that fought alongside the first suffered terribly at the hands of the enemies the Astartes were tasked in exterminating, and were often purged in the wake of any actions, lest the nature of the now defeated foes were made too public to manage. The name a second cognomen to replace their noble, uncrowned prince's title 
began to spread amongst the armies of unity. Mm. The first were now the Angels of Death. Freaking dope, Simon. This was not considered an insult by the Legion. Quite contrary, they lent into their reputation, deliberately courting it by employing Reaper and Skull iconography into their heraldry, That's so darkening cool. their Women already banners. blackened Mark II plate to superlatively grim levels. They wore the whispered dread Super surrounding sick. them with a fierce pride, seeing themselves as a bulwark between the common human and the terrors of the dark that would rend Sword their minds the wings. and flesh asunder. Those they fought alongside were not always content to see it as such, declaring, although often not openly, that the Legion was becoming arrogant in their status. The first itself shrugged off these slights, seemingly perfectly content to be the omnipresent threat forever lurking in the long shadows cast by the prominence and widespread fame of other up-and-coming legions. While many of their burgeoning cousins were engaging in the first true trials by combat during the Solar Reclamation, the first had already purged Sol of its tenth artificial satellite, the Xenos Moon of Sedna, and were conducting a day- I want to read that real quick, like not to cut them off. Oh, let's see here. The Reaper is a honor mark often associated with the Legion's, Legion's Terran veterans. Those who had served during the conquest hall. Decade long series of vigil and of the soul system. Bearing the ornate mark of the first legion and of the Tergrammaton, Mark II Padron Bergans to a warrior of the Great Crusade. So that one was a dark angel that fought in the Great Crusade. Uh this Mark II Padron bears the mark of the lesser initiate of the fire wing, and despite its low station, it belongs to the Consul invigilator of the ninth order that's pretty cool i don't know too much about the the fire wing the gold lion emblem shown on this mark ii powder marks the command staff of the 48th order were drawn from caliban dude pretty sweet shoulder patterns so. of negation operations or paladin, or in the Orch cloud and along the edges that. of the heliopause as with their early extermination efforts, none of this was committed to official record oh, aside more. from the most oblique references or heavily redacted combat logs. And once again, the first took pride in their seclusion, for they had spent the decade forming the earliest of the Legion's orders. Similar to the hosts, the orders formed the third and most granular layer of the Legion's already Byzantine combat and authority structure, each a collection of specialists dedicating themselves to a singular focus, or a oh, singular that's foe. Cool. More precise, the mark... Of the storm wing was common sight the phenomenally of the first legion infantry signifying their stairs the infantry veterans that's pretty cool cross swords of the deathling on a field of bone white marking or that has survived more wounds freaking then that's really sick you see them wearing that and it's like hey man you know I lived through that by the time of the Thramas Crusade the star symbol become a legendary legion icon used by the first legion. The icon is the personal headery of the Praetor. The display of such personal arms was com a common feature of the First Legion. Yeah, the wings and the sword. This than the wider scope of the hosts. These orders could count amongst their number only perhaps the Raven a dozen wing or two bikes. And each was in possession of unique traditions, ciphers, and practices utterly inscrutable to outsiders, even their Legion brothers. And the knowledge they held on there. and gained through the blood of their initiates could and would be disseminated be amongst the Legion whensoever know, it was needed, sure, rapidly turning the Ravens into a vital part of the Legion's so sheer cool. lethality. While the hosts had found themselves collapsing into one another as their functions aligned, look at that beautiful armor. Mwah. Magnifico. The orders only propagated further with each great and terrible enemy of mankind finding a dedicated task force of the most lethal of the Emperor's Astartes arrayed against it. The Orders further helped evolve the Legion, excising the weaknesses, the gaps in knowledge and skill that it had still retained when it had first entered the darkness of the Heliopause. They returned from their lonely sojourn to no victory parade or great ceremony, but to the satisfaction of the Emperor and the honor 
of being at the vanguard of the greatest human endeavor in history, the Great Crusade. Their service was Let's by no means on. unnoticed. I think we're going to quit right here, like I said. That way we can continue that, and then we'll get to about like the hour mark and then finish it up, man. Oculus does so good, though, like I said. He, he's taught me a lot, and like some stuff, like, it's just... It's it's like a literal rabbit hole. Like it's it's something you really have to take time to think about and to learn. Warhammer's not something that's done overnight. Like I said, I'm so proud of myself to where I know some of the things he's talking about now. Whereas before I was like, huh? Like I like I just didn't understand it at all or I couldn't point out certain things. So it's cool to continue to learn and man, he's a he's a great teacher. He knows his stuff. He knows the lore, like I said. Fantastic. So definitely support the original content, like I said. Part two. Part two of all these videos that you see will be coming soon. Like I said, man, if I had infinite time, it'd be easy just to sit there for an hour. But, man, I'm on a time crunch with work and different things. I stream and all that. So, guys, thank you so much for helping me reach freaking YouTube partner, like I said. Eventually, maybe one day we can get that check mark and hit that 100,000. But guys, you have been awesome. You have been patient. Like I said, you've supported me so quickly. And I'm glad to have every one of you here on the channel that, that support me, man. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for smashing the like button. Thank you for leaving your comments and recommendations. Like I said, more is to come. Like I said, stay tuned. We'll see you in the next video.